Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Recently, I've gone into this free-to-play shooter currently in open beta called Iron Sight, and I thought I'd record a mini review of the game in its current state for you guys. Before we really get started, here's a quick overview of basically the story and uh, where the game's from. Developed by South Korean studio Whipple Games and published by Aerial Games in Germany, Iron Sight is a free-to-play first-person shooter set in a semi-futuristic setting where the United States and European Union, known as the NAF, are fighting Russia, known as Eden, for what is left of the world's resources after a major natural disaster causes meltdowns in most of the world's nuclear power facilities. Now that we have that covered, let's get into the actual game. So far, I have been very impressed with what Whipple Games has created with Iron Sight. The game has been in open beta since February 1st this year, and has already seen many major updates from new modes, weapons, maps, and in-game events, as well as seeing smaller weekly hotfixes, fixing bugs, and server issues, which there are plenty of, but we'll get back to that later. Graphically, Iron Sight holds its own very well. While not as visually stunning as new Call of Duties or other AAA titles, Whipple's, appropriately named Iron Engine, does a great job at handling the textures, physics, and impressive amount of particles, while keeping the game running at a good frame rate on anything from potato laptops to high-end gaming machines. Gameplay-wise, Iron Sight's FPS mechanics are definitely up there with many of the top dog first-person shooters. It has a very fast time to kill with smooth, snappy gunplay that most of the time feels incredibly well-balanced. Its movement, to which many of you will be happy for, is quote-unquote boots on the ground, with a stamina-based sprint, prone, crouch, and basic vaulting mechanics. The game features six game modes, TDM, Secure Point, Search and Destroy, Resource Takeover, AI Team Deathmatch, and for all you competitive gamers out there, a ranked playlist. These game modes are all set on a decent selection of maps that for the most part are well designed. Each map utilizes the tried and true three lane system and include very interesting and fun interactable and time triggered objects within the environment, some of which can lead to some pretty interesting and epic moments during your matches. When it comes to your character and loadouts, you can create up to three, which you can swap between whenever you die in game. Each loadout lets you pick one primary weapon with three attachments, one sidearm, one lethal, one tactical, and three score streak deployable drones. The variety of weapons and attachments is also quite impressive, rivaling those of many larger and more prominent titles. These can all be unlocked by leveling up, purchasing with GP, one of the in-game currencies, or unlocking through the ever-hated supply boxes. Luckily, GP is very easy to earn through gameplay and daily logins, but supply boxes? Not so much. Whipple and Area games do allow you to earn supply boxes by leveling and completing daily quests and such, but the focus here is most definitely on getting you to drop some coin on these boxes. In these boxes, you can unlock many weapon and scope variants that would normally cost you large amounts of GP, none of which, I might add, are better than the standard variants. This brings us to the negatives of Iron Sight. To be honest, there are very few negatives to this game, and most of the ones there are are very much due to the nature of free-to-play games such as this one. The most prominent one, and by far the most controversial topic in games as of late, is the presence of microtransactions, an unfortunate reality in these free-to-play games. These microtransactions include supply boxes, which we've already discussed, XP boosts, GP boosts, and starter packs, some of which can definitely boost your progression in-game. But so far, I haven't found any items locked behind real-life money that can give a player an obvious advantage in gameplay, just cosmetics. The game's servers are also a huge issue. I have been playing Iron Sight for a little over two weeks now and have been unable to play many times due to problems with their servers. This is something I had expected from a beta by a smaller studio, but had nevertheless hoped wouldn't be a problem. This of course can be very frustrating at times. However, it currently doesn't make the game unworthy of your time. It is, however, as a new player, something you should be aware of when choosing whether to download it now or wait for a full release. There are a few other small things I wish the game had, and I hope get included in future updates, such as better looking emote animations, and maybe the ability to see characters of others in your party on screen. But these are in no way game breaking, just a small list of things I have on my feature and improvement wishlist. 
Overall, I am very impressed with Iron Sight. If the devs can keep the updates, patches, and content coming, I can see a good future for the game. And I hope it does have a future, because I'm having plenty of fun playing it. As always, thanks for sticking around till the end, and I hope you enjoyed this mini review of sorts. I'm hoping to continue covering this game moving forwards with some weekly update videos and other fun content. In the meantime, however, let me know in the comments section below your personal thoughts on Iron Sight. If you've played it, what do you like or dislike about the game? Do you have any features you would like them to add in the future? And if you haven't played it yet, I've added a link in the description where you can download Iron Sight completely free and check it out for yourself. Again, thanks for watching. Peace.